How's it going guys, and welcome back to the Purple Box, the semi-regularly posted series where I try to chronicle every non-unique weapon in Borderlands 3 to let you know whether it's trash, treasure, or completely inconsequential. If you'd like to give any of the weapons showcased in this video a go, a save file containing all of them will be available in my Discord server linked down in the description. But with that out of the way, Hyperion, the android to Atlas is Apple, high tech and still pricey, but puts you in control of that weapon. Hyperion is the obvious choice for business-minded individuals who are looking for for the most bang, literally, for their buck. Hyperion offers reduced accuracy compensated by their reverse recoil technology. The longer you fire, the more accurate the weapon will get. Along with that, Hyperions are all equipped with a front-facing shield which deploys whenever you aim down sights, blocking shots for you until it breaks, after which requiring a brief amount of time to recharge. There's a few different types of these front-facing shields. The regular one is just an incredibly basic shield that functions the same as a body shield, doing nothing fancy and just blocking those projectiles shot towards you. This one has a blue tint when active. Amped, which when hit, will increase the damage of your weapon for a few seconds. This is a purple tint when active. Genesis, which upon taking damage converts it into ammo added directly into your weapon's magazine. If the magazine is full, it is added to your reserves. This has a green tint when active. And finally, Redirect, which has a chance to reflect melee and projectile damage back at the attacker when hit. This has a beige tint when active. These shields also sometimes have stats tied to them, though it's different per weapon. For SMGs, the regular has a 65% increased front phrasing shield shield capacity, Amp gives an additional 7% weapon damage, and Genesis and Redirect give a slight accuracy increase. For Snipers, Regular gives a slight fire rate bonus, Reflect gives 13% crit damage with a slight handling penalty, and Genesis gives a slight accuracy increase. And finally, Shotguns which don't get any bonuses from their shields. Every single Hyperion weapon also has a manufacturer bonus of 5% damage on crit. This is a multiplicative bonus. Now actually getting into the weapons themselves though, we will start off with Pistol. Oh wait! There's there's no fucking Hyperion pistols in BO3 because Magic Man Randy's fucking hoarding them for himself. Actually though, getting into things, we'll start off with SMGs, starting with the Boardroom, which is our balanced stats variant of SMGs, having pretty average stats across the board. And the Boardroom is pretty shit. It was chewing through almost an entire magazine to just take care of a single basic ass enemy, especially with the fire rate that this thing has, that means you're chewing through a lot of ammo pretty quick just to kill one thing. But on top of that, it really just didn't have the damage output to deal with badasses pretty much at all. It's rough. There's really nothing I can actually say good about this thing other than it burrs hard as hell, so I guess that's a plush. But overall, the boardroom is really not that good and kind of just chews through your ammo faster than it chews through enemies. Moving on to the power play, which is our high damage, low fire rate variant. And unfortunately, the power play isn't really much better than the boardroom. But I did say it isn't much better because I do think it is very slightly better. The fire rate does take a pretty noticeable hit here, and it does actually lead to overall lower DPS than the boardroom. However, it's only slightly lower, and having slightly lower overall DPS for just way less ammo consumption, I'm gonna say is probably better. And while I'm saying it's better, unfortunately, being better than dog shit still makes you kinda shit. If you're gonna be using a non-unique Hyperion SMG, the power play is definitely the way to go, but I'm gonna have some really harsh questions for you. And the final SMG here is the Hive Mind, which is our Alien Barrel variant. Firing somewhat slow orbs that can ricochet off of surfaces once and consumes two ammo per shot. And this felt incredibly similar to the boardroom, except it had double the ammo cost, higher fire rate, and slower projectiles. So it's the boardroom, but empties your ammo reserves way faster and is just overall less efficient. Yeah, I'm not too impressed with Hyperion SMGs, which for being a class of weapon that has a pretty big pool of amazing legendaries, is a bit surprising. The damage output of these guns just really isn't there. While their fire rate and accuracy is great, accuracy being greatly helped due to just how amazing the reverse recoil is on SMGs, the actual damage just really isn't there to back it up. Power play is definitely the best of the three, but even then it falls pretty flat. Though, I'm gonna be honest, non-unique SMGs as a whole don't have a great track record, and I have a feeling Hyperion might just be some of the better ones, which is pretty sad. But moving on to shotguns, let's start off with the Collaborator, which is the lower damage damage high fire rate variant. This can roll in times 5 and times 6 for 1 ammo per shot and times 10 and times 13 for 2. Starting with the times 6, the collaborator is pretty alright. It has decent damage output, it has a high fire rate, and just big shred potential because of that. It feels really good to use and has a perfectly viable damage output, though it isn't anything too spectacular. Moving to that times 13 though, this was a pretty big step up in the damage and just overall felt more consistent. Ammo consumption definitely becomes a problem here though. You'll kill a decent amount of enemies before you run out, but you 
you are still gonna run out decently fast. It's not enough for me to say it's necessarily bad, but it is definitely a big drawback. Next up is the Downsizer with our balance stats and our highest projectile count. It will roll with times seven and times nine for one ammo per shot or times 14 and times 18 for two. Starting with the times nine, this had a noticeably lower fire rate than the Collaborator, but along with this, noticeably higher damage. Literally dealing almost the same amount of damage per projectile as the Collaborator, but just having three more. So despite that lower fire rate, it definitely felt like it had a higher DPS overall, just making it feel like a way better version of the Collaborator in almost every single possible way. The lower fire rate meant you weren't chewing through ammo as fast, and even despite it being lower, again, that overall DPS was feeling way higher. This is definitely a really solid weapon and could easily keep up in the end game. And with the times 18, surprisingly enough, I actually preferred the times 9. Somehow the damage really didn't feel all that much different, if not almost weaker at times, while ammo consumption definitely starts to be an issue. On a character or a build that benefits more from higher projectile counts, obviously the times 18 would be better, but for the most part, I think I just prefer the times 9 downsizer. And our last of the generic shotguns is the Outsourcer, which is our high damage, lowest fire rate variant. Able to roll in only times 6 for 1 projectile per shot, or times 12 for 2. Starting with the times 6, again, it was a pretty solid weapon, as is all of the shotguns so far, but I'm not too sure it's outperforming the downsizer all that much. At times, the damage felt better, but most of the time, it felt the same, if not worse, with just a lower fire rate. However, with the times 12, damage starts to feel much better, and it actually feels like you're getting some sort of actual value out of using this over the downsizer. Along with that, though, this is where that lower fire rate becomes more of an upside, as you're getting higher pellet counts without blowing through your ammo as fast. Of course, this is coming with the lowest max projectile count, but I think that's a totally fair trade-off when you're actually just able to upkeep the ammo as well as this can. And our final shotgun is the Host, our alien barrel variant. The Host fires a bouncing projectile that explodes each time it makes contact with a surface or enemy, bouncing three times. The Host consumes two ammo per shot or three ammo per shot for the times two variant. The Host is a really cool gun. Unfortunately, it's gonna kill you more than it kills anything else. The erratically bouncing splash damage is already a death sentence, but the fact that it just doesn't deal all that much damage makes it even worse. It'd at least be a manageable drawback if this thing was able to fucking kill. Even when pronking a racer with it, it often wouldn't make much of a difference. I imagine with a full-on explosion type build, it could do some funny stuff, but it doesn't fix the constant fight for your life problem. And times two really just doesn't fix that. If anything, it just makes the problem worse while also consuming more ammo. Which is really a shame, because despite sucking, the host is an incredibly fun weapon to use even when not dealing damage to anyone but yourself. So imagine how much more fun it would be if it was an actually viable weapon. Shotguns are honestly where Hyperion starts to really shine. Reverse recoil feels like it was practically made for them, while they all have pretty decent projectile counts, good damage, and really solid fire rates. I'm also just always a fan of the feel of auto shotties in video games, and Hyperion really nails the fun factor of them. Really enjoyable, all of them are really good, definitely a worthwhile class. The only two really worth ignoring are the Collaborator, since it just doesn't do all that much that the other two generic shotguns don't do better, and the Host because it stinks. And coming to our final class of weapons here, the Snipers. Starting out with the Techspert as our lowest damage, highest fire rate variant. And this was pretty alright. The fire rate was nice as it lets you take more advantage of Hyperion's reverse recoil, damage was fine, but overall nothing too incredibly special. Despite being a sniper with low damage and high fire rate, and wanting to spam those shots out for that reverse recoil, ammo consumption wasn't actually that big of a problem, but it was definitely still higher than most other sniper rifles. Next up is the Entrepreneur, which has our balanced stats. The damage increase here over the Techspert was definitely noticeable, while the fire rate really didn't feel all that much worse, which it really wasn't. The Techspert was about 2.85, and the Entrepreneur was 2.06. You're not really losing all that much here. Of course, these rules can vary, but the Entrepreneur is still able to have a decent enough fire rate to make use of the reverse recoil, while having some almost surprising damage output. Mostly surprising due to the fact that, again, these guns actually feel decently ammo efficient for being snipers that fire out shots faster than most. But especially with the Entrepreneur, at no point did I feel like I was running through ammo too quickly, and I was killing more than enough enemies per magazine to be happy with the performance. And next is the Mogul coming in with our highest damage but lowest fire rate. And that higher damage thing is a complete fucking joke because the damage values between the Mogul and the Entrepreneur are almost identical. But despite that difference not being drastic at all, the fire rate is taking a pretty big hit. So you're getting barely any damage increase for significantly lower fire rate. This is also known as getting fucking scammed. Overall, the Mogul was fine, but I think it's definitely the worst of the three snipers so far. It's just simply offering less for not much more than the Entrepreneur. And finally is the Broodmother, again, 
our alien barrel variant. It is the only of these snipers to be full auto, it fires energy beams that can ricochet off surfaces and can pierce through enemies. It is the absolute lowest damage but highest fire rate of these snipers. And this thing is pretty fun, you know, for the 30 seconds you might be able to use it for. Full auto, two ammo per shot, and of course consuming sniper ammo. These are three things that go terribly together for the most part, and this is really no exception. It could have potentially been fine if not for the fucking abysmal damage that this thing deals per shot. If the Broodmother had the damage to kill squishies in like three to four shots, allowing you to get the hang of it and burst fire it on enemies, then there could be some potential there. Unfortunately, that's not the case, and all you get is an empty ammo pool in 40 seconds or less, guaranteed or your money back. Overall though, Hyperion snipers are alright, in terms of damage at least. While the damage output is good, that's not exactly the problem. The problem is the reverse recoil. These things are so ungodly and accurate and difficult to use until that recoil actually starts to kick in. While they are fine to use damage wise, they are some of the most unfun and obnoxious snipers to actually use. I think the Entrepreneur is the best overall of the generic set due to having a good mix of damage and fire rate to quickly start taking advantage of that recoil, but if you really want to understand what I mean, just go use the mogul in any mobbing area for a few minutes without a frozen heart. It's fucking agonizing. The base starting accuracy of snipers should be significantly better than this. Hyperion weapons are fine. I think that's the best way to describe just about every single aspect of them. Their thematic, their gimmicks, their effectiveness, it's all fine. With the exception of shotguns, Hyperion shotguns feel like where everything really just comes together incredibly well. The front facing shields are incredibly effective for those close quarters encounters, the reverse recoil stacks quickly on them and makes them just that much more effective for dumping an entire blast into a crit spot, which of course then just perfectly takes advantage of that manufacturer crit bonus. All of the pieces are just perfected with shotguns, while SMGs and snipers feel like just a piece of that puzzle doesn't quite work on them. Hyperion also just completely dropped the ball with all of their alien barrels, which is unfortunate because the host and the broodmother are really fun concepts. But overall, this just leaves Hyperion having some very good, but mostly very bad. And also no fucking pistols. What the fuck? Why is there no fucking Hyperion pistols? They were like the best fucking part of every other goddamn game. Every other fucking manufacturer got pistols except for the one fucking manufacturer that I wanted to have pistols. Fuck! But that's an about do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, definitely consider leaving a like, comment, subscribe, all that. Right after this video goes up, I'll be live right here on YouTube, but also over on my Twitch channel where there will be a link to down in the description below. And just under that is a link to my Discord server where you can come and join and hang out. But with that all being said, I hope to see you guys in the next one.